Igor Sergeyevich Guzenko, Russian, Igor Sergeyevich Guzenko or SRF, Zirik, Ukrainian, Igor Sergeyevich Guzenko Eor Senior Ijaivit Yuzenko, January 13, 1919 to June 28, 1982, was a cipher clerk for the Soviet Embassy to Canada in Ottawa, Ontario. He defected on September 5, 1945, just three days after the end of World War II, with 109 documents on Soviet espionage activities in the West. This forced Prime Minister Mackenzie King to call a royal commission to investigate espionage in Canada. Guzenko exposed Joseph Stalin's efforts to steal nuclear secrets, and the technique of planting sleeper agents. The Guzenko Affair is often credited as a triggering event of the Cold War, with historian Jack Granitstein stating it was the beginning of the Cold War for public opinion, and journalist Robert Fulford writing he was absolutely certain the Cold War began in Ottawa." The New York Times described Guzenko's actions as having "...awakened the people of North America to the magnitude and the danger of Soviet espionage." <laughs> <laughs> Background Guzenko was born to a Ukrainian family on January 13, 1919, in the village of Rogachev near Dmitrov, Moscow Governorate now Moscow Oblast, 100 km northwest of Moscow, he was the youngest of three children. Igor's father was not present in his early life. Igor attended the Moscow Architectural Institute. While at the institute he met his future wife Svetlana Anna Gausova. the couple married soon after meeting. At the start of World War II, he joined the military where he trained for a year as a cipher clerk. His position gave him knowledge of Soviet espionage activities in the West. Guzenko worked under the leadership of Colonel Nikolai Zabotin. Topic. Defection In September 1945, hearing that he and his family were to be sent home to the Soviet Union and dissatisfied with the quality of life and the politics of his homeland, he decided to defect. Guzenko walked out of the embassy door carrying with him a briefcase with Soviet code books and deciphering materials. He initially went to the Royal Canadian Mounted Police, but the RCMP officers on duty refused to believe his story. He then went to the Ottawa Journal newspaper, but the paper's night editor was not interested, and suggested he go to the Department of Justice, however nobody was on duty when he arrived. Terrified that the Soviets had discovered his duplicity, he went back to his apartment and hid his family in the apartment across the hall for the night. Guzenko, hidden by a neighbor, watched through the keyhole as a group of Soviet agents broke into his apartment. They began searching through his belongings, and only left when confronted by Ottawa police. The next day Guzenko was able to find contacts in the RCMP who were willing to examine the documents he had removed from the Soviet embassy. Guzenko was transported by the RCMP to the secret World War II, Camp 10, comfortably distant from Ottawa. While there, Guzenko was interviewed by investigators from Britain's Internal Security Service, MI5, rather than MI6, as Canada was within the British Commonwealth, and by investigators from the US Federal Bureau of Investigation, as the CIA had not yet been founded. It has been alleged that though the RCMP expressed interest in Guzenko, Prime Minister of Canada William Lyon Mackenzie King initially wanted nothing to do with him. Even with Guzenko in hiding and under RCMP protection, King reportedly pushed for a diplomatic solution to avoid upsetting the Soviet Union, still a wartime ally and ostensible friend. Documents reveal that King, then 70 and weary from six years of war leadership, was aghast when Norman Robertson, his undersecretary for external affairs, and his assistant, H. H. Rong, informed him on the morning of September 6, 1945, that a terrible thing had happened. Guzenko and his wife Svetlana, they told him, had appeared at the office of Justice Minister Louis Saint Laurent with documents unmasking Soviet perfidy on Canadian soil. It was like a bomb on top of everything else, King wrote. King's diaries assembled after his death were missing a single volume for November 10 to December 31, 1945, according to Library and Archives Canada. Robertson told the Prime Minister that Guzenko was threatening suicide, but King was adamant that his government not get involved, even if Guzenko was apprehended by Soviet authorities. Robertson ignored King's wishes and authorized granting asylum to Guzenko and his family, on the basis that their lives were in danger. 
Topic: <laughs> Ramifications of the defection. In February 1946, as news spread that a network of Canadian spies under control of the Soviet Union had been passing classified information to the Soviet government, it created a great stir. Much of the information taken then is public knowledge now, and the Canadian government was less concerned with the information stolen, but more of the potential of real secrets coming into the hands of future enemies. Canada played an important part in the early research with nuclear bomb technology, Canada along with the UK being part of the wartime Manhattan Project, and that kind of vital information could be dangerous to Canadian interests in the hands of other nations. Guzenko's defection ushered in the modern era of Canadian security intelligence. The evidence provided by Guzenko led to the arrest of 39 suspects, including Agatha Chapman, whose apartment at 282 Somerset Street, West was a favorite evening rendezvous. A total of 18 were eventually convicted of a variety of offenses. Among those convicted were Fred Rose, who was the only Communist Member of Parliament in the Canadian House of Commons, Sam Carr, the Communist Party's national organizer, and scientist Raymond Boyer. Chapman was later acquitted. The judge in her case announced that. No case has been made out and, as far as this trial is concerned, the accused is dismissed." A Royal Commission of Inquiry to Investigate Espionage, headed by Justices Robert Tashiro and Roy Kalak, was conducted into the Guzenko affair and his evidence of a Soviet spy ring in Canada. It also alerted other countries around the world, such as the United States and the United Kingdom, that Soviet agents had almost certainly infiltrated their nations as well. Guzenko provided many vital leads which assisted greatly with ongoing espionage investigations in Britain and North America. The documents he handed over exposed numerous Canadians who were spying for the Soviet Union. A clerk at the External Affairs, a Canadian Army captain, and a radar engineer working at the National Research Council were arrested for espionage. A spy ring of up to 20 people passing information to the Soviets led by Communist Party MP Fred Rose was also exposed. Life in Canada Guzenko and his family were given another identity by the Canadian government out of fear of Soviet reprisals. Guzenko, as assigned by the Canadian government, lived the rest of his life under the assumed name of George Brown. Little is known about his life afterwards, but it is understood that he and his wife settled down to a middle-class existence in the Toronto suburb of Clarkson. They raised eight children together. He was, however, involved in a defamation case against Maclean's for a libelous article written about him. The case was eventually heard by the Supreme Court of Canada. Guzenko remained in the public eye, writing two books, This Was My Choice, a non-fiction account of his defection, and the novel The Fall of a Titan, which won a Governor General's Award in 1954. Guzenko also appeared on television to promote his books and air grievances with the RCMP, always with a hood over his head. Topic death Guzenko died of a heart attack in 1982 at Mississauga, Ontario, Canada. Svetlana died in September 2001 and was buried next to him. His grave was unmarked until 2002, when family members erected a headstone. In June 2003, the city of Ottawa and in April 2004, the Canadian federal government put up memorial plaques in Dundonald Park commemorating the Soviet defector. It was from this park that RCMP agents monitored Guzenko's apartment across Somerset Street the night men from the Soviet embassy came looking for Guzenko. Topic film The story of the Guzenko affair was made into the film The Iron Curtain in 1948, directed by William Wellman, with screenplay by Milton Crims, and starring Dana Andrews and Jean Tierney as Igor and Anna Guzenko, produced by 20th Century Fox. Topic see also Kalak Tashiro Commission List of Eastern Bloc Defectors List of KGB Defectors Sir William Stevenson Topic References Topic Books The Defection of Igor Guzenko, Report of the Canadian Royal Commission Intelligence Series, Volume 3, No. 6, Aegean Park, 1996. ISBN 0-89412-096-4. Amy Knight, How the Cold War Began, The Igor Guzenko Affair and the Hunt for Soviet Spies, Carol and Graf, 2006. ISBN 0-7867-1816-1. J. L. Black and Martin Rudner, eds. The Guzenko Affair, Penumbra Press, 2006. ISBN 1-894131-91-6. 
Sawatsky, John, Guzenko, The Untold Story, Gage Publishing Ltd., 1984. ISBN 0 7715 9812 2. Granitstein, J. L., and Stafford, David, Spy Wars, Key Porter Books Ltd., 1990. ISBN 1 55013 258 X. Stevenson, William, Intrepid's Last Case. Guzenko, Igor, This Was My Choice, Air and Spottiswood, London, 1948. Sawatsky, John, Men in the Shadows, Totem Books, 1983. ISBN 0-00-216821-9. Pickersgill, J. W., and Forster, O. F., E. D. S., The Mackenzie King Record, Toronto, The University of Toronto Press, 1970, Volume 3. Clement, Dominique, Canada's Rights Revolution, Vancouver, UBC Press, 2008. Topic external links CBC Digital Archives, The Guzenko Affair CBC Digital Archives, Igor Guzenko, Russian Spy Buster Spy vs. Spy, What Igor Guzenko Taught the West, Review by Harvey Clear of How the Cold War Began, The Igor Guzenko Affair and the Hunt for Soviet Spies, in the Weekly Standard, December 18, 2006. Report of the Royal Commission to Investigate Facts Relating to and the Circumstances Surrounding the Communication, by Public Officials and Other Persons in Positions of Trust of Secret and Confidential Information to Agents of a Foreign Power, 1947.